Welcome, today we're gonna to talk about how emotions can make you sick. So did you know that the brain cannot tell the difference between past, present, and future? Think about this for a second. Have you ever been anticipating something in the future, like maybe a test, or a presentation, or a conversation, and you felt sick to your stomach, or nervous in your chest? Or have you thought about anything in the past that happened and gotten angry and felt tight or tense? Have you ever noticed that emotion creates changes in your body? We're gonna talk about this and more and how to heal your body through emotions right after the showreel. <laughs> you can't be able to watch. So one of the challenges that I see today is that people are unaware of how their emotions are actually impacting their body. And not only emotions, I'm also talking about stress. Now people say, oh, stress, like, yeah, I'm under a lot of stress, but I'm talking about good stress and bad stress. So in other words, if I decide to get married, that might be a stressful event for me, but very positive. Or if I'm starting a new job that I'm excited about, that can create positive stress for me. And see, when we are in a heightened state of emotion of any kind, our body has physiological changes. In other words, our hormones shift, how we breathe shifts, how we hold ourselves shifts. Depending upon how our hormones are, that can affect our digestion. That can affect how much we eliminate. When you start feeling physical changes in your body, maybe you're having stomach cramps or constipation, or you're having shoulder pain, or you're having headaches, start noticing what makes them better or worse. It's not only emotions that create physical changes. Of course, it's your food, and of course, it's your environment around you. But as you start noticing what stressors physical, mental, or emotional stressors start amplifying your physical conditions, you can then learn to make changes. So imagine now instead that every time you have a headache, you start realizing that, oh yes, my headaches are related to not sleeping enough or not taking care of myself or having too much stress at work. Because the other challenge that I see is even when people are aware of their stressors, they're not quite aware of how to help fix those stressors, right? So we walk around with these emotions and we just try to shove them down or now's not the time to deal with this or I'm over that or I, I should be over that anyway because it's been a long time. And instead of really honoring and processing through the emotions, we ignore them. Now, whether you're looking at Chinese medicine and how emotions impact individual organs, or whether you're looking at Bruce Lipton's work of how environment impacts cells, or whether you're actually observing your own body, we know that it's extremely important to let unresolved emotion and stressors get out of the nervous system so the body can function at its most optimal way. Wouldn't you like optimal fun functioning? And this is why it's so important to look at things like emotional freedom techniques, tapping, at breath work, at journaling, perhaps hypnosis tracks will help you. As much as it's really popular today to do positive affirmations, that's great. Yes, we want to have a positive attitude, but if I'm bypassing my emotions by just overriding with positive statements, that's not helpful. Like if my leg is cut off at the knee and I'm just like, I feel good, I feel great, I feel wonderful, I can get through this, I'm healthy. It's not helpful, is it? So in the same way that physical conditions require physical treatments, emotional conditions require emotional attention. Because the other challenge that I see with our emotional state is that sometimes our emotional stressors, excuse me, our physical stressors of emotions don't show up until a couple of years after an event. In fact, when I work with some people, I'll ask them, 
when did this challenge start? And this could be anything from stomach aches to headaches to actual procrastination or inability to sleep. And when I asked them, when did this start? What was going on in your life? Most people are like, eh, there's nothing going on in my life at that time. But if I say, okay, what was going on in your life a year before that or two years before that, there is usually some big life change stressor that the body took a while to adapt to. The loss of a loved one, a divorce, a life change, um, a change in job, a change in career or moving across country or something that may not even have seemed negative for any reason, but had a big, huge impact on the body's nervous system that it never quite adapted to. So do you have things in your life that when you think about them today still make you upset or angry or give you a little bit of physical discomfort somehow? That's why it's so important to learn more about this subject and see healers. I'm actually doing a couple of classes coming up in person and I'll do some online on the emotional and physical connection to your health. So look for those on my event, right? I'll put the link down below in my link tree. And I ask you now, instead of ignoring your emotions, instead of ignoring feelings, instead of ignoring, oh, I just have a headache today because I'm dehydrated, or I just have a little bit of a stomach ache because I ate something. If your physical conditions keep going on longer and longer, they go away and come back, despite what you're doing, maybe nutritionally or supplementally, or maybe you've seen the doctor, check your emotional state. Hire somebody that can support you through actually exploring what is going on in your system. Where did this start? What is the unconscious mind trying to tell you? Because the unconscious mind will keep the body safe despite itself, which means sometimes it will create disease just in order to get your attention to clear something bigger in your system. So comment below. Have you ever had any sensations from a past event? I'd love to hear about it. Remember, you are love, you are loving, you are lovable. Have a lovely day.